Good morning, everyone. Day two in Oklahoma has begun. We have begun to uh, road cruise east here. I'm not sure how uh, far we're actually going today, but we'll see. I have intentions of staying east of Tulsa later tonight, so, but basically we're traveling from the kind of pocket forest prairie area here off towards more uh, established gallery and full forests uh, by this evening, hopefully. So as we do that, we'll be exiting the range of things like prairie rattlesnakes and uh, the uh, massasaugas and entering the range of broad-banded copperheads, timber rattlesnakes, and hopefully maybe worm snakes and a few other things. Let's see if there's anybody home. Damn, it looks good. Nada. This giant bag of junk have anything more under it. Also something that has to be discussed on this trip that wasn't discussed on previous trips is this nasty little thing called snake fungal disease, which is quite prevalent in the eastern U.S. and might be around in Oklahoma as well. So to try and prevent transferring that from different animals, and such. We are treating shoes and hooks and such with bleach between locations. As usual it was plants that got my attention first because well they don't get up and run like snakes do. Uh, drum and skull caps, Scutellaria species are found worldwide. Uh, sun drops are a new species for me as well. Didn't take long though before I did find the reptiles I was looking for. There was a snake. Nope, I did not lose him. Got a big, beautiful western coach whip for our first snake on day two. This guy is a little bit more colorful than the uh, one we found yesterday. Not by much. These guys can get a whole lot prettier than this, of course. Bright pink heads. Uh, sometimes a lot of black down their bodies. Hopefully later in the week we'll find the easterns, which tend to have dark heads and lighter tails. But he is... Uh, a little bit bigger one than the last one too, and right now he's flicking his tongue so it's not working too well, but he's doing something that uh, a lot of people might not know Coach Whip's do, and that is playing dead, which is why he's not biting me right now. If I were to lay him on the ground, he'd just kind of lay there flat, doing nothing. Probably because he's a little bit cold still. Again, this is a species that really likes it hot. Like, if it's 100 degrees out, they'll still be cruising because they're hunting the lizards that like it out at that time, too. <laughs> he's dribbling, drooling, pretending he's dead. But, absolutely gorgeous animal. And, of course, if you look down at that tail, you can see that coach whip pattern. But, we'll get a couple of photos and then put him back where he was. Alright, dude, you've dribbled on my pants enough. Let's go put you back, okay? Why are you drooling like that? You're weird. All right, you were right over here. Okay? You know where this is. Yeah, there you go. Zoom off into a hole he goes somewhere. Go on. <laughs> Beautiful snake. Right over here. I don't think he knows I'm here yet. I hope it stays that way. It might be a racer. Okay. Oh, no, 
it's not. Oh my gosh. Look at you. Oh, you're gorgeous. Oh, you're grumpy. Sir, you're okay. You're okay. My goodness. Come here. Come here. You're okay. Hey, you're okay. Look at you. You're so pretty. All right, let's get some film. All right, snake number two, as we listen to the cardinals in the background, is this gorgeous speckled king snake out on the crawl, who is uh, very, very grumpy. Very unhappy that I am here. <laughs> These guys are pretty generalistic reptile eaters. And uh, other animals, small animals. Uh oh, I'm gonna pause here because there's a car coming. All right, he tagged me while I was paused there. He's definitely very grumpy. First time one of these has actually bit me. <laughs> anyway, so this is uh, a relatively moderately sized one. They can get up to four and a half, sometimes almost five feet. So he's not huge, but he is quite beautiful. But they will eat just about anything. And what people like to make them famous for is the fact that they will take on venomous snakes as well. Uh, they do have a resistance, not quite immunity, but resistance to uh, pit viper venom. So they will eat copperheads and rattlesnakes and so on when they find them. But uh, really, they will just eat about just about anything out there. Small rodents, lizards, snakes, birds, what have you. So they're a great animal to have around. They're beautiful. They're harmless. But they don't actually... Uh, they don't really... Uh, discourage other snakes from being in the area like a lot of people think they do. <laughs> so we're going to get a couple of photos because he's in a hurry to get off the road and then let him on as well. Oh, and something I haven't showed, he's been rattling his tail here. That is not actually a rattlesnake mimicry or anything. That's just uh, him trying to make noise. Whoops, come here, dude. You're okay. Make noise in the leaf litter so that I <laughs> stop bothering him. All right, dude, look, you were heading off in this direction, so we want to move you... Whoops, dropping my sanitizer. We want to move you in the direction you were heading, okay? So you were going this way. So let's get you over here in the nice, ooh, shady area. Yeah? Here. Oh, there's a lizard over there. Go chase the lizard, dude. Okay, you go that way. Go that way. Go that way. Sir, you need to go in that direction. Go on. Go. You're being kind of clueless here. You don't want to go back on the road. Go, go. Go, go, go. Sir, no, you don't want to, don't fight me. Just go crawl away. Go crawl away. Your head's covered in dirt. Go find another hole to burrow in. Go on. Giving me a pretty shot of your uh, belly there. I might get a photo of that real quick. Also, for those wondering, that is the full extent of a king snake bite. Hardly even worth mentioning. Where's he at? I think I lost him. I don't see him now. Damn, he moved fast. So when people think Oklahoma, this is probably what most comes to mind. It's across this big, open prairie area. Much of the central and the kind of southwest portion of the state looks like that. But as we continue heading east, start to lose the open prairies and get a whole lot more of the forested lands where 
copperheads and timbers like living. Now, unless you're looking for coach whips and racers, of which I missed an incredible, almost solid black looking racer as I was driving along, um, midday is not great for looking for snakes overall because it's hot, it's sunny, they're just going to be pretty much hiding, hunkering down until it starts to cool off and evening moves in. So, uh, on my trip, I took a stop to uh, pause by a local uh, city lake and did a little birding watching uh, for cardinals that I failed to get decent video of, as usual, uh, other species that were in the area. The lake did have a couple of turtle species too, so we can see those here, but I just kind of used this as a holdover until the evening when stuff started to ramp up again. Well, it's not much. There's a reptile in the middle of this city park that I'm at. I'll have to double check later what species that is. I'm gonna guess a red-eared slider. Oh yeah, I can see the ears from here. Native, very common. And floating on a log in the middle of the lake. Oh, what the heck. It's been nothing for hours. All I've got is a chewed on acorn looking thing. Under the rock. Can I flip this? Oh my god, I can. But there's nobody under it. Don't think that one's gonna move. Oh well. Hmm. Nope, that one's not coming out. Nobody. Nobody. Is it just too hot today for things to be under rocks or what? I have no idea. So I actually, uh, I missed the flip clip on this guy, but we finally have another species for the trip here. Haldia striatula, rough earth snake, hiding under a rock. They're called rough earths because they have these uh, very tiny keels on their scales. 
uh, which separates them from the genus Virginia, the smooth earth snakes. They're fairly similar otherwise. Oh, we've got a uh, quail coming onto the road over here. What on earth? That was weird. Anyway, back to this guy. <laughs> um, they're invertebrate eaters. They like slugs and earthworms and things like that. Uh, small, soft-bodied invertebrates. And I'm going to have to double check uh, which family they're in, because I think they're a natricid snake. So somewhat related to garters, but I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll check it here. But we're going to get a couple of photos of him, and we'll put him right back underneath his rock. All right, real quick, before I put him back, there is a, uh, a red-winged blackbird calling away on the fence over there. Apparently he's interested in what I'm doing, but anyway. Back to the rock where this guy was at. Yeah, they're fossorial animals, they like to burrow, so we'll put him right back under where he was. And there he goes. Doo -doo. Scissor-tailed flycatchers to get any good view of them, but first time I've seen them on this trip already. And here's a slightly better look at one that was kind enough for once to actually land on a uh, telephone wire and pose for me for a bit. They usually just, they take off as soon as I see them. Uh, they are the Oklahoma State bird, and they are beautiful animals too. When they're in flight, you can actually see these brilliant, like, peachy orange-red patches under their wings. And of course, that long, skinny tail that they will flare out. That's a trait uh, used probably for sexual selection uh, in the mating process. All right, people. <laughs> That's what I was out here looking for. Look at him. Agkistrodon, Latisinctus, and we've got to get him off the road. Come here, you. Yeah, yeah. Found a copperhead. One less. Luckily, no, not one less, though uh, that local probably isn't very happy about the fact that I wanted this guy to stay alive and wanted to get him off the road. Of course, once you say that you're out there specifically looking for this, these things, oftentimes they have a hard time arguing with you about how bad these animals are, according to them. So talking with the locals is definitely always going to be interesting when dealing with these guys. He wasn't too happy seeing that he was still alive, but luckily didn't really push the issue any further after I mentioned I was filming them. Because really, they are absolutely beautiful animals. So this is the broad-banded copperhead, Agkistrodon latisinctus. Uh, some people uh, still consider it a subspecies of the more broad-ranging copperhead as a whole. but. These guys are found starting here as pure species, kind of right in the central Oklahoma area. And then they swing down and westward in through Texas. You find the most distinct and probably broad banded versions in the Trans-Pecos area. Desert habitat in uh, west Texas. Very different from the uh, forest around here. But... These guys, they don't really get very big. Uh, this one is not full grown, but he's about a uh, foot and a half long, maybe a push in two feet. They will average right around three feet long, sometimes getting up to four, but that's rare. They are really not a very big viper at all. And uh, you can kind of see on the tail there how it's got that slightly off color look. That's because when he was young, he used to have a bright yellow-greenish looking tail that they will twitch and wiggle around in order to lure uh, birds and frogs and other small animals in uh, as food. As these guys are quite generalistic in their uh, feeding habits. They will eat just about anything, really. 
uh, frogs, lizards, rodents, small birds, and they actually really, really like cicadas when they hatch out too. So you'll see them actually sometimes climbing trees to go after them. They're a relatively, uh, they're a relatively laid back animal overall at night here. They do get a little snappy uh, as they're moving around because they're a little more exposed. But overall, not really an issue animal at all. Um, now, to say they have the among the weakest venoms of any of the uh, significant snakes in the U.S., but that's not to say it's not a bite that you shouldn't uh, treat with any sort of lackadaisical attitude. Uh, if you get bit by a copperhead, it might be a dry bite, but it might also be enough to kill you. So, uh, always good to go to the hospital if that happens. And you can see, if I stand up and away, whoops, there went the foam. If you didn't really see this guy stretched out somewhere in the open, like on the road here, he would blend in really well. And if we were to see him in uh, leaf litter, you would see he would basically disappear completely. Because they have such perfect camouflage for the forests where they typically live. Or in the case of the West Desert ones, the grasslands. And uh, scree rubble that they live in. So we're going to get a couple of photos of this guy and then get him off the road so that nobody else runs him over. Whoop. All right, now that he has uh, been photographed, we're gonna get the hook here. No, sir. Okay. You're not very good at this, are you? No, you can't go under the, you can't go under the car. Yeah, we can escort you off this way. That works. Keep going. I know, I'm gonna touch ya. You're okay. Here, if you ride the hook, ooh, look at that belly color on you. You're beautiful. Let's just put you right over here, okay? There you go. Look at that. If you didn't know he was right there, if you didn't know he was right there, he would disappear in the leaf litter. Okay, dude, you gotta go that way now. We don't want anyone else running you over, okay? Whoops. Come on. Go that way. Go, go. There you go. Good boy. All right, so this guy came flying off the road. It's one of the leopard frog species. Not entirely sure which one this... I think it's the uh, southern leopard frog, but I'll have to double check in the uh, notes. There must be a stream somewhere very nearby, though, that he's heading for. So, I'm going to try and get a couple of good photos before he runs off. Unfortunately, all I managed to get of this guy were a couple of crappy photos before he went flying off the road. If you ever happen to encounter these guys when they're crossing roads at night, they literally look like they are flying. Like, they take the most massive leaps. They can clear 10, 12 feet in a single uh, jump. So this guy managed to get right across the road and down into the ditch nearby in one, maybe two hops, and he was gone. Uh, and I think this is a Woodhouse's Toad. But we are getting close to the range where they start introgressing with the American toad, which would be a new species for me, so I've got to keep an eye out. I have never seen them with that red color on the uh, parotids quite like that, so that might be an introgression sign. I'll have to keep an eye out, though. Quite a handsome dude. So while this might be an introgression, uh, more likely it is in fact the first of my American toads that I would see. Luckily, not the last. I was able to see several others, but uh, they are very, very similar to the Woodhouse's toads. And again, they do integrate. The species are very recently diverged, and so they can still sometimes recognize each other as viable mates and produce hybrids. So this is something familiar from southern Colorado as well. This is the Oklahoma brown tarantula. There's been a couple of these hockey pucks running around tonight. I haven't stopped for them yet because I wasn't entirely sure what they were. This one was pretty clear to me from the roof from driving by. Oh, we got some big old June bugs hitting the ground around here too. Some strange birds calling in the background too. There's a couple of whippoorwills and something else. 
Anyway, we're gonna get a couple of photos and then keep moving. We're driving past the lake. There's cricket frogs of some kind out there. And a couple other frogs too. Well, the tarantulas were very, very active, but after that copperhead, there wasn't a whole lot else. But hey, new species for the uh, lifer list, and a new species to show on the channel as well. Uh, tomorrow we are entering a very, very different kind of habitat. We'll actually be visiting the Ozark Plateau. There's uh, some very unique species that live up there, and nowhere else in this state and only just barely in uh, possibly Arkansas and Missouri. So hopefully we'll get to find some of those. Uh, we're going to be entering areas where there is an extremely high diversity of salamanders, which is something that I've never been able to uh, encounter before. But in order to see that, you'll have to tune in for the next episode. And until then, uh, if you'd like to help support production of educational videos like this, consider joining us at uh, patreon.com slash hcarlton. You'll get a, uh, early access to the videos. There are exclusive uh, benefits as well, including things like seed contests for those who like growing interesting plants. Uh, there's exclusive merch and more. Uh, there's also one-time donations that we can take through coffee. That link will be in the description for the video. Uh, if you'd like to visit the website where you can find all the plants that I have for sale, see the uh, database and blog where I have informational stuff up, uh, you can visit carltoncarnivores.com. And of course, if you want to see more photos and videos and such, little tidbits here and there, you can always find us on uh, social media, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, at Carlton Carnivores. But until next time, I'm Hawk and Carlton, and this is Carlton Carnivores. Mm -hmm.